And so what's interesting is that when Aristotle looked up into the universe, he saw that the bodies or the heavenly bodies are eternal. They belong to what he identified as the ether. Okay? Now today we laugh at the ether. But we don't realize that the same idea has just a different word to it. It's called space-time. <laughs> the ether is fundamentally space-time. It is the fabric, an analogy, of, of, of all events, all possible events, taking on a potential position within a coordinated system. And all these are just possible outcomes of the same substance, ultimately. Now, Anaxagoras said, prior to Aristotle, that the planets are burning rocks. You know, they're molten rocks up into the sky. And the Greeks made progress when Aristotle said, well, these planets are actually more than that. They, they, they pertain part of an ether, a fundamental equal substance, an eternal substance, an unbreakable substance, an unmoved substance in the universe. And this substance does not perish, nor is it created, nor is it destroyed. It is only ultimately altered as the modern equivalent principle of physics defines matter and energy to be. Energy is not created, nor is it destroyed, it is only altered. And so, this idea of ether is not so foreign from today's understanding of energy and and ultimately space and time. That gravity itself has an effect on elements in the universe such as light. That gravity itself bends light and that's how we know there is a gravity in the first place. Is that light is ultimately bent around the surface and the circumference of spherical objects in the universe like planets and galaxies and ultimately black holes. Now space-time, the fabric of space-time, or ether, or whatever you want to call it, is ultimately the layer of reality. You could say the virtual layer of reality, like the screen on a two-dimensional plane figure, like the screen on your computer, that contains all the content of any possible moment in existence. 